Hey guys, what are you doing? Welcome to my shed in the first week of August. You can tell it's the first week of August. Why? Because have you ever seen me wear a purple shirt that has this on it? No Paul Miro, John Powell guitar, no Bob Log, no Scott H. Byram, no Reverend Payton, no restaurant, no Proud Hound. You know who that is? You should. Proud Hound. Hey, Cody. Anyway, this says this. And that means, yeah, I was going to start off making some shellac. Shellac. I'm getting very cultured in my guitar building and finishing. You know that we've done great things with uh, finishes, odd finishes, like the Mississippi mud slide and using Mississippi clay mud dirt and the Bob Law guitar right here, which was stained with oak gall ink. You know what? I'm going to put a playlist together right up there right about now of odd ball stains and that kind of thing and we're gonna do this and I'll explain that to you in a minute here anyway I am actually filling out campaign papers I have been elected to my seat on the school board not once but twice and I'm a cleanup man yeah that's what I do Dotty I'm a cleanup man Dotty that's right so, got things cleaned up, a lot of stuff going on, and I was going to be done. And I thought, you know what, this is about the time things are starting to get rewarding for the kids in our district, and maybe I should hang out for that and make sure that the stuff that I've done doesn't get thrown away in a trash can. Anyway, remind me to be politically correct some other time. So let's talk about what we're doing here. Now, I don't want you to get all freaked out, but... Do you know what this is? Yeah, it's grain alcohol. Grain alcohol. It's called Everclear. It is 120 proof. It's proof of grain alcohol, I guess. Now, do you know that they make violins? There's one right up there, right about now. You see it up there? Can you see it? Can you see it? Look, Mommy. Watch me, Mommy. Right up there. It says Fred Wolecki on it. You know Fred. You've seen episodes with Fred. In fact, they're called A Minute with Fred, and there is going to be a playlist right up there, right about. Now you're saying, hey, you know what? Why don't you get to what you're doing? Look, don't start your mouth watering, getting all freaking out and shaking because I hold up Everclear. But here's the bottom line. Violin makers use shellac and varnish. And so how do you make shellac? Well, there's a lac part, L-A-C. And that is... A reference to a lac bug, which is a borer, insect order, hymenoptera, like bees and wasps. Hymenoptera, you hear, heard it here first. Yes, you're welcome. I'm an arborist. So anyway, beetles go into trees. They oviposit eggs into trees, especially wounds. That's why you cut your trees in the winter. You don't cut them in the summer. You don't cut them in March because the cambium doesn't have enough time to cover over the edge of the wound. You see the rings in trees, the outer one grows over. You see how trees grow around their wounds. Anyway, insect comes along, oviposits an egg. Now, if the tree is healthy, it will create sap or amber. It looks like this. We'll get a close up of this and it will push the insect away and encapsulate them. That's what amber is. Now, I have come across a theory in my brain and only my brain that I don't think boring insects are able to go, hey, I did a soil analysis and a tissue analysis on that tree. That tree's weak. Let's hit it. I think that when they're moving around and the wind is moving around, I think the density of the tissue of the tree, especially weak trees, is displayed in differences in sonic frequencies produced by the tree, especially when the wind is blowing, like this string is different than that string. You heard it here first. Don't wait for the research paper. Go by stock and 
I don't know why. Anyway, I'll let you know when I invent it, but you heard it here first. I'm actually an arborist. So, back to lack. People take trees. They wound them. It causes them to exude things. They capture that. It's like sap. It hardens up like amber, then they crush it, and then they mix it with alcohol, so you have spirit varnish and lacquer, and then oil varnish and lacquer. So we're going to make spirit lacquer today, and we're going to make red lacquer because this sap is coming from eucalyptus cider oxalon, eucalyptus cider oxalon, or red iron bark. What I want to tell you about this tree is its bark, they call it iron bark for a reason, when the trees are young, they flex around and they will ooze this reddish, it looks like Marvel Mystery Oil. I swear it looks exactly like Marvel Mystery Oil. The viscosity is different. I'm sending you to the dictionary. I know it, but I'm here. Remember, to educate you, it's my job. That's what I do. Yeah. I'm an educator, Dottie. Anyway. So the tree moves around in the wind when it's young. It exudes this stuff. It goes all over the bark, and after a while, the bark is really tough, and it is resistant against a lot of things. So red iron bark, eucalyptus, eucalyptus cideroxalon. When you see this stuff coming out, they call it keno, K-I-N-O, keno, and it's a natural function of the tree. I don't expect you'll find any of them where there are snow. I wouldn't park my cars underneath their cousin eucalyptus globulus, and I will tell you a lot about that someday or you can just google my name and find it yourself i've written some stuff about the structure of trees hydraulic architecture of trees google me i am ken Fallsgraf. ken p-f-a-l-z-g-r-f got that i'm not the bowler but i'm every other one of them as you know anyway let's go to the bench and okay wayne first off i have not forgot about you now I forgot about you. The rest of y'all need to follow directions carefully, starting with do not covet that Bob Log, the third poster on that door. That's international. It show sure is. Okay, we're gonna get these election papers that I've been filling out, which has been distracting me from my career as a fake luthier long enough tonight. And you're gonna follow some directions starting off with this. I had a dust mask made for my channel, specifically for my channel. You might want one of those. Now, you are going to need some Keno or tree leakage or whatever you want to call it from li uh, liquid amber. Try again. Eucalyptus cider oxalon in a little jar like this. Now, what makes this stuff special? Well... Let's have a look. I am so ill prepared. Phone light on, action. Okay, this stuff leaks out of the tree. And it creates a very red, clear substance. You see that? Can you tell? Ooh, look at that now. Do you see it now? Do you see it now? It's marvelous, isn't it? Ruby red. Okay, let's look at what you're going to need. You're going to need some Everclear. Now, I need to tell you a couple of things. First off, I'm the only one in my family that's ever done anything decent with Everclear. Let's talk about my grandpa, Bub, who used to own a bar infamous in northern Wisconsin, a place called Ladysmith, called Shaw Dam Tavern. You could not miss it because... That's right, he had a two-story outhouse in front. When I was about five years old, I asked Grandpa Bob, hey, I opened up this door right here. I actually opened up this very door and said, hey, Grandpa, I looked in here, and the hole from this one comes right down into here. So I guess somebody gets up here. This is Pa, this is Ma. I think you can understand what that means. So with Pa being down here, if Ma were to climb up here, and, well, you know how nature does this thing, and then... In there and so I, f I was pretty bright I figured that out and I said grandpa how can that be and he gave me some idea of how these two are going to interact and related it to what was likely to happen in my life so hey thank you grandpa Bob for giving me such wonderful advice that affected my relationships later thanks grandpa Bob anyway grandpa Bob 
this Everclear is not for you because I understand you made your own with your brother Lester out in the woods. So we're going to get some Everclear. So you need, you're going to need some Everclear. You're going to need some Eucalyptus Cider Oxalant Kino. You're going to need a mason jar. You're going to need a mortar and pedestal. And God knows, y'all going to need some Jesus when you die. Okay, let's get the camera right. Yes. How do you know when the camera's right? When you can see this. Now, I have collected X amount of Kino. You're going to put it in this scrapparatus right here. Okay. We're going to mash it up with this. We're going to get it as small as we can without creating dangerous particulate. The stuff is like glass, by the way, guys. When you are crushing this stuff up, you're going to find that out. It'll cut you, it'll make you cough, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, we're going to grind that up. Now, it is one part Kino to four parts Everclear. So, we got the scale right here. We're going to turn it on. Pressing that button. It says, hello, hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. We're going to set it to grams. We're going to put our little bottle here. We're going to hit tear, which means it measures to zero. Okay, we have crushed up the Kino. Put it in a bag. Now we're going to put that in here. And what do you know? We have... Let's get a little bit out of there. We have 80 grams. 80. Right there. You see it. God is my witness. 80 grams right there. Store that number. What is 8 times 4? Well, where I come from, and even in Oklahoma, it is 32. So we add on a zero. We need 320 grams of Everclear. Let's pop this open. Here we go. And we're going to put this do not covet my Atlas mason jar. That's older than you and me put together. I'm going to hit tear again. And we're going to dump Everclear in here until it says 320. Let's have a look. We might need There it is. 320. That's good enough for Grandpa Bub. It's good enough for me. Anyway, now we have 320. In other words, four times the amount of Everclear. Now we're just going to take this and we're going to dump it in here like this. And we are going to seal this up. We are going to let it sit in the cool dry place and we are going to just let this sit and stir it up a little bit every now and then and this will turn bright red all right guys check it out I have my shellac it's going to sit here for a while we got some guitars to build I'm expecting this to take up the color that you saw of the Kino or Amber and we got a half a bottle of Everclear left so if you've got uh, I don't know how much is here I'm not an alcoholic maybe one of y'all can tell me about this anyway half a bottle of this size and 80 grams of some kind of tree amber and you should be able to make your own shellac now I'll catch up with you in another episode and show you what we're going to do. Hey, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe. And if you don't like me, at least like this and use your al alcoholic tendency to project onto your like for me. Anyway, in all reality, you all need to get in the car and you need to establish residency 
the day before the election and you can go vote for me. And then once you vote for me and I win again, then you can get out of my town. Thank you, loyal viewers. Love you guys. See you soon. No, no, not in my front yard, not in my shed. Just kind of, that was a rhetorical thing. See you soon. That's what I say instead of swearing at you. Pray for me, Grandpa Bob.